All right. Hello and welcome. It's Forge. I messed up my hair. Better. Hello and welcome to the Forge of World stream. Uh, last week, last week we did some dragon work. Started with just dragons, full stop, on Tuesday. Then on Thursday we did the dragon hunting cowboys. And touched a little bit on species, which is what we're going to work on today. The specifically the playable rate, playable species of uh, of the for the players, of course, if they're playable, it's for the players. Anywho, enough of me rambling. Let's get straight into it. On to one note. So, figured out what species we've got. We have humans, elves, dwarves, halflings, gnomes, dragonborn, orcs, mermaids, goblins, go hobgoblins, bugbears, arsama, dream people, tieflings, and lizard folk. Yes. All right. We figured out the year of origin of a couple. Gnomes and orcs being the first, and then mermaids being close after. Goblins being made fairly soon after that, and then... Dragonborn being when dragons got on the on the train. Yes, dream people. Not sure if you were in the last stream, Silver, but dream people are basically the tieflings and Asimas of the dream realm, which we touched on a few episodes prior to this one. Uh, so it's part of the religion with the shattering, the separation of the dream realm and the. <sighs> Dream Realm and the Material Realm. Ah. Yeah, right. Ah, uh, but yes, so where Tieflings come from hell, Arsena come from uh, the heavens made bl uh, touched by the gods, Dream People have roots in the Plane of Dreams, which I reckon will be fun. And. I think. Alright, actually, did I specify what the date is currently? I don't think we did. We've got the start dates and whatnot. <sighs> gnomes are the first. And that is, that was year zero, the creation of gnomes started it. Or would I say, like, they were created then and then? Yeah, alright. So... Who got on this next? So we've got Lof, Ross, Dune, and Jill. Who else would be interested in stuff? So Lof, Ross, Dune, and Jill. Dune made goblins? Dune was the moon. Yeah, that's right. Goblins and the moon are a thing. Hmm. I think we should probably touch on halflings and dwarves or lizard folk next. Humans are stretched out gnomes? Maybe. Maybe. Started to realize that, uh. They might be stretched out gnomes. Possibly. We'll, we'll see when we get there. Uh, we've got a couple stops to make first. Stop clicking on weird bits. I need to make these, this a different color. Hold on. Red chalk? That works. Alright. Legion. I reckon. Lof and Dune are probably going to have. Probably going to have an argument, as they do. Because they always do. So I reckon. I reckon now that goblins and orcs are both around, Lof and Dune are like, oh yeah, well mine's better. And they both keep arguing, then Lof's like, well, guess what? I think Lof makes the dwarves. As part of this thing, or what's it? Not too long after goblins, so maybe we'll say 65. And then... Dune is like, well, you may, you've got two. 
Yes, if gnomes came first, gnomes aren't just short people. That is true. That is true, Silver Aurea. But we also, historically that's true, but we also need to take into account who the leading powers are at the time. If the leading powers are all tall people, then they will say, alright, this is the standard that we set, you guys are now considered short. But on a cosmolo cosmic level, that is indeed true. Gnomes are the original and standard. Probably also why we have really tiny things like pixies and fairies. <sighs> no, pixies and fairies are not on the material plane. They're somewhere else. We haven't done anything with the Feywild yet. That might be interesting. But anyway, anywho, uh, Loth was like, well, now I've got orcs and dwarves, and they're both cool. Then Doom was like, oh yeah? Well, now I've got goblins, and then hobgoblins, and should we do bugbears as well? No, the Cosmos, Cosmos doesn't care about your perspective, but... The players are playing within the perspectives of the other people in the world. And history books don't care what the cosmos doesn't care about. History books care about the historians. But yes. Gnomish, hist <laughs> Gnomish historians probably are like... They're like, oh yeah, I'm... No, Gnomish historians... Some of them probably have a disdain for tall people saying that they're short. Like, like the really nitpicky type of historians are all like, we're not short, you guys are tall. We were made first. We are the, we are the standard. Stop calling us short. There's definitely, <laughs> there might even be an immortal gnome or two who who are like, stop stop calling us short. You, you're wrong. And it is true. They are wrong. We'll have the halflings, so... Halflings will have to come fairly soon. The last to come, I think, will be Asuma, Dream People, Tieflings, and Elves. Anywho. Hobgoblins. Dune was like, well... You've got two, now I've got two. Look at that. So dwarves and orcs have a relation to the sun, both of them. And goblins and hobgoblins both have a relation to the moon. I think bugbears should be created by someone else. What have, what's Jill made? Jill made gnomes. No, I don't think I want... Earth? Earth could have made bugbears. Or... Actually, no. Loth made bugbears. Not dwarves. Clicking around. Ha! Earth made dwarves. Because I do... The idea of the idea of uh, uh, dwarves coming from the earth is interesting, and I feel can be cool for creating certain certain uh, themes and structures within the world. And underground dwarven strongholds are cool, like. Really cool. So, so yeah, yeah, that that's that's definitely a thing. Hmm. All right. And then I reckon everything stagnated a little bit before lizard folk and humans, or maybe I did touch on this. I think I touched on this last uh, stream when I talked about the idea of man-made species 
like what uh, Matt Colville does with Dragonborn and uh, I can't remember what other ones there oh and the Orakai in Lord of the Rings they are made by Saruman and likewise I think Dragonborn are made by wizards in Matt Colville's game that make up the dra the dragon phalanx which is neat and interesting and I like the idea of uh, yeah I like the idea of man-made species well mortal m species made by mortal hands is that is that dramatic enough I see as a gnome so, so that's plenty of time for a We didn't give a date for this. Because the Seer and Wilhef, both of those two are deities that were made within the calendar. So... No, okay. We'll run this by the cosmic calendar. Then we'll figure out if there's mortal calendars later. So this, I, I think for now this will just be reference. Anywho, getting off topic. Humans and lizard folk. I think are the ones that are made next. I think lizard folk. Yeah, religion, days. I think lizard folk are probably made by what by one of the new deities. Bortel? Could be made by Bortel, craft invention community and home. Because uh, lizard folk do have the ability to craft things from the corpses of things they kill, which is cool, and could tie into that. Or Tisk? Tisk? Or Earth? I think Bortel. Yeah. Bortel made lizard folk. This was a while. So there was a while? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. You're right, Silver Ore. I'd probably. Actually, no, I don't know what it'd be. It'd be. It could be the. Uh, death of a Messiah, like our current. Christian, well, the one that I use in a Western society, could be Great Battle. Who knows? Who knows? So, Bortel made lizard folk, I reckon probably, probably at least 215. No, everything's divisible by 5, 213. So, let's change a couple of these things. 72. Hmm. 134. 127. 131. There we go. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Less. What's wrong with 5? There's nothing wrong with 5 Apple Martini 69. It's just that I don't want it to seem mathematical. I want it to be like, oh yeah, this just happened over time it's not like every five years or every 15 years or whatever a species is made so I want it to be less divisible also it's nice to see you here Apple Martini 69 uh, next up humans humans are made next I reckon who's messaging ah, tweeter Possibly. That I think I think that's probably what I'm gonna try and avoid in this world. Although you never know. When we move on to another world, that might be exactly what happens. Humans made in year 
Ooh, humans are made in year 222. And I think two could be a significant number for humans. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true, Silvery. I've heard of that. Yeah, that's exactly. So we'll figure out what the mortal calendar is for uh, Talera once we establish more of the history. So we'll work on that in a beat. But, but humans, who were humans made by? Could humans be the creatures made by mortal hands? No. <laughs> Will have? No. Asia could have made them. I actually think. Yeah, so Bortel was like, alright, I'm gonna craft me some people, because I'm a god now, and I can do that. And then Asiya was like, huh, that's neat. I've been, I know how to, how magic works, and how constructs are made. So, why not try and follow in the same thing? And then, as such, Asiya made humans. So humans were made by gnomes. By a gnome. Uh, hmm. Do I want to do that? Maybe. I'm just going to put a question mark there. Just so I can go back to it. Anywho. Awesome are dream people and tieflings. <laughs> That, that would be interesting, and something which would definitely be uh, funny to touch on in-game, Silver Array. So it is tempting to do that. But I think I'll leave it as a question mark, just in case I come up with a better idea. For new... Halflings. I think halflings were mortal made. Why would someone make halflings? No. Ah. Hey, dear. Awesome dream people and tieflings were made by mortals. Accidentally. Where the others were all made by gods. Someone made a mistake and opened up something within this within the humanoid species that allowed outside influence to affect them. As such, Asuma Dream People and Tieflings were created at the same time. So I reckon this is even later. This is far later, as a matter of fact, in the cosmic calendar. I reckon this was probably 517. 27? Alright, 27 works. 527 years after the creation of not life, of conscious creatures? Conscious beings? Not even that. Something. After the creation of humanoids. Asuma dream people and tieflings were accidentally made by some rando messing with cosmic stuff that they shouldn't have been. Ooh, 
Ooh, actually, hold on. Let's get this in notes real quick. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Oh, yeah. I listened to a cool song today for the sailors considered dead or in a state of undeath, which could be interesting. Just hold on. Let me write this down first. So, I reckon we can tie a bunch of things together. So, obviously, uh, the new deities, other than Kaziel, who's dead, uh, they wouldn't really have a place to go when they, uh, after they became deities. They were still on the material plane. But, but wait. I think when Arsama Dream People and Tieflings were made, hello, Mammy Vet, nice to see you. I think when Arsama Dream People and Tieflings were made, It was because someone made a mistake and meddled with the deities and what they were doing and accidentally uh, used their powers in a way that shouldn't have happened. And because of that, the old deities were like, alright, no, we can't have mortals having access to deity stuff. Because that's too dangerous. They already tore it. They already made a tear in the fabric of the material. Uh, we can't have something like that happening again. And then. That caused the. Deities. To. Ascend. Physically. To another plane of existence. So deities ascended. When. Someone tore open when a mortal tore open the space between, no, tore open the material plane. The using deific power. When this occurred, the old deities decided that mortals and deities should not have direct contact any longer. As such, the deities now live on. Deity demiplane. Because I don't know what it is yet. But we will. So I'll just keep that there for when I need it. Halflings. Halflings happen next. This is after everyone else is gone. I think halflings grew out of the ground. Like a veggie patch. Like cabbage patch kids. Hence why they're all farmers and whatnot. So, grew out of the ground. So, no one has any idea who made halflings. They just happened. And they're there, and they're there now. This happened even later. So I'm going to say like... Hmm, 700. 703. No, this one, this one can be straight up 700. Maybe something happens every 700 years and halflings were just the first thing. Maybe. Figure that out later. Elves. Elves have only existed for a generation or two. So now we need to figure out what the date is on the cosmic calendar. And I reckon it's been a couple millennia. So that everyone can organize everything. And become settlements and what have you. So elves arrived in 3712. It's been a while. About 3,000 years after halflings are made. After halflings spring up, people are already like, Oh my god, it's been 200 years and the gods are gone. How can someone be made? And then someone else is like, 
oh my god, it's been 3,000 years and the gods are gone. How can someone else again be made? And do we know how the elves were made? Or did they similarly appear like halflings? They didn't grow out of the ground. We'll, we'll, we'll have to come up with something different for them. But... Hmm... Come from the trees? The trees decided to uproot themselves and became Ents and Elves? Maybe. <sighs> Elves could represent pure forces of nature. So maybe. So maybe there was like a thunderstorm and a tornado and a volcano and a tidal wave and an earthquake going off all at once. And then, at the center of that, elves were made. No. But maybe. No. <sighs> but maybe. Maybe something like that. <sighs> okay, well this... Okay, Roger, also, nice to see you. A whole mass of so they came from a whole mass of uh, natural phenomena phenomena colliding and then the raw energy and power that came from that stopped uh, thing in the water Actually, I feel like 527 years isn't long enough. Maybe they should come after halflings. I think they come after halflings. Hold on. Let's make Arsmer and Dream people... You know what? Let's just make them... H27. And it's like... Oh yeah, so then it's like, alright. Well, I guess, uh... Then people will be like, oh, I guess... No more new species now since... Deities are gone. Coalesced. Nah, we'll, we'll say we, we'll probably say coalesced in the actual origin story, but weren't in the thing about what's it? Yeah, so eight hundred and twenty-seven years of good times. Everyone's having fun, and then someone used god powers, and because of that. Gods are gone. Then somehow, the raw power. Yes, they are a young species. Yes, they. I, I like the idea of elves being. Is it to zero? I'm not quite sure what you mean, Rojo. Uh, but I like the idea of elves being fresh. Uh. All of them act like teenagers, essentially, in the fact that they live really long times, but they haven't, as a society, got much experience under their belt. And as such, they all act like teenagers, essentially. Makes them more tricksy and fun, and I like it, and you can't stop me. <clears throat> Anywho... I don't know if I want to make a seer the one that made humans. Like, it would be cool to have the gnomes be able to say, look, we, we're we not short. We, we are the first species, and you were made by a gnome. You are tall. We are not short. But I don't think I want to do that. Maybe, actually, the dream deities haven't made anyone yet. Maybe humans could be made by a dream deity. That could be cool. And so yuck. Oh yeah, young old race, very pog. That's what I love about him. Yeah, and so yuck could have done it. Spirit in the mind. Manifesting mind creatures. 
creatures with minds from the minds of others something akin to that <laughs> maybe maybe Rojel mm. maybe magic or Telactha, deity of ideas, inventions, and dreams. Accidentally dreamed up humans one day. Yeah, I don't think I want to keep it with us here. Yeah, sorry about that, everyone. Conflict? Could be them. Orcuselia. Harvest, healing, medicine, and birth. Hmm. I don't know. No, I, I can get rid of that real quick. It could be an old deity. No, we've already done too many old deities. New, new deities have had their fun. Need a dream deity. But then who? I reckon Telecta. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Alright. Interbreeding. Humans, yes. Elves, yes. Dwarves? Yes, I like half dwarves. Halflings? Nope. Gnomes? Nope. Dragonborn? Nope. Orcs? Yes. Mermaids? Yes. Goblins? Goblins, no. Hobgoblins, yes. Bugbears. Bugbears, no. Asma, yes, because they are. Well, actually, no. Uh. See original species. Because with Tieflings, Asma, and Dream People, they aren't a species un unto themselves. They are another species that has been influenced by something else but enough for them to have become their own species in a sense so based on the original species that they are mm, see original species yeah yeah. Mm. Hold on a second. Lizard fig no. <sighs> Maybe. Maybe they can. Maybe because of the. Actually, no. tieflings. Yes. Dream people know. Dream people are infertile. Now, ah, yeah. I don't know why. For some reason, Discord still seems to be running. Hold on. Task manager. Where's Discord? There you are. End task. Go away. Now, sh should not happen. Ask me, yes. So, yes, I like the idea of dream people being unable to reproduce just because they can. And the fact that they are influenced by the dream means that their connection to the physical, including reproducing, is lessened. Meaning that they cannot. Maybe near infertile. We'll do near infertile. It's possible, but really difficult and highly unlikely. That works. All right. So that's the species, their year of origin, the creator. That's the origin story is wrong. The creator. Interbreeding. And that's that's that. What if it's a horny dream? 
Those are why that is why they're near infertile and not completely infertile. Add page. All right. Do we want to go through these one at a time and figure out the the origin story of each of the species? If we do that, it'll probably go into next stream as well. That would be a lot for half an hour. You know, honestly, with all of these, depending on how long they go, it could be two more streams. So, would people like to see that? Would people like? Would people like to see the origins of each of these species, one by one, and the story that goes with it? Alright, let's go and make a page for each of them first, hold on. Is that enough? We'll see. Species list. Actually, no, you know what, let's put these in order. Names. Orcs. <laughs> Mermaids. Fifty goblins. This may take a while. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Ah, no. There they are. Bugbears, that's the one I'm looking for. <laughs> Bugbears, then hobgoblins. Then we jump to dwarves. Yep. Twenty-seven. No, wait, forgot dragon more. Then dwarves. No oh, wait. No, I have that right. Hold on, let's just swap them around real quick. Dragon one dwarves. Then was it folk? <sighs> then we jump to humans. And halflings, then Asima Tiefling and Tieflings and Dream People. I should really come up with a name for the Dream People. And then Elves. Yeah, and then else. Alrighty. Starting half longs? Oh. Oh, yeah, no, it's half longs. Got it right. Shut up. Ah, crap. Accidentally open Discord. Let's hope it does not stay. Half longs. Half longs. Dream stands? Ah, uh, no, no, no. Maybe. No. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Gnomes. Let's... How did they come about? That was Jill? Jill. What was Jill doing? Long halves. What was Jill doing that caused... 
I was job doing that caused them to create gnomes. Jill was wondering the material. Creating plants, trees. Plants, trees, animals, and the like. And found themselves rather lonely. The other deities were little fun. Spent a lot of their time dealing with their own personal drama. As such, Jill set about creating their own friends. And out came Gnomes. So that's how gnomes came about. That it, that, that's how gnomes came about. So, Jill taught the gnomes the art of creation and the art of creation. No. What did you? What did you teach? I can speak. What did Jill teach the gnomes? Nature, birth, and death. So wait, how long do gnomes live? Hold on. Five hundred years. All right. So they live a while. They live a good while. The first gnome was not around for halflings, but everything else, halflings onward, but everything else they were around for. Jill taught the gnomes play play and happiness and while the civilization grew she looked over them rights of life some form of right life nature and death yes you're right while the civilization grew she looked over them taught them sorry taught the gnomes plain happiness and the importance of respecting the importance of respecting the lives of other creatures even in death so when they hunt creatures for meat they uh, Jill made sure that they still understood the importance of respecting the creatures that they had even once they were dead. She taught them now from this they developed particular rites that are followed At the death of any living creature. Yeah, that works. <laughs> maybe they only eat creatures that have followed these rites, and as such, they. Maybe a lot of people say, oh yeah, no, gnomes are. gnomes are vegetarian or something, they don't eat meat, but it's just because they don't eat meat that hasn't been. that hasn't been given these rites. Upon death, 
Maybe. That would be cool. I think. From this, or at least, gnomes that follow the face of Geo. Specifically. Yeah. I reckon that's good for gnomes. Orcs. We made orcs. Orcs with Loth. Loth. Loth doesn't like people having things that they don't have. Yeah. Upon seeing Jill's creation of the gnomes, Loth was envious and felt that they needed their own species. As such, Loth created orcs, but did not grant them the same teachings of respect for nature and what have you. Instead, hmm. I feel like orcs were probably the ones that first utilized fire in the sense that Loth is the deity of the sun and the sun is fire. Instead, they were granted the power of fire to defend themselves. So maybe there is a tradition of orcs being pyromancers with uh, divine magic and sorcery. Did sorcerers exist before Asia? Sorcerers existed. Not wizards. Fire to defend themselves. Some orcs use this fire to destroy. Some orcs. It's like the. You know, in Avatar with the Fire Nation, how most of them see it as anger, destruction, etc. But then slowly over time, you see it also. Uh, be passion, uh, beauty, life. I think there's a similar dichotomy. I think that's the right word for within orc orcish original orcish society, and some of those ideas probably still persisted. Unfortunately. I feel like there's definitely been a couple of times of strife, and in those times, the orcs that use fire to destroy probably utilized that and were seen as heroic and what have you. But yes, anyway. Some orcs use this fire to destroy, some orcs viewed this fire as passion and drive. So, I feel like this would be the, okay, actually no, because the idea of strictly species designated societies, I don't know, it's never really clicked with me. The, the, it seems odd that others aren't there. So, 
these would be the first people to teach the ideas of Loth, but anyone who worships Loth probably sees this. Uh, the dichotomy between destruction and passion. They were just the first ones to do it. Same with gnomes in this. Some gnomes probably saw the orcs and were like, hey, that's cool, and swapped over as humanoids, well, humans in this world, humanoids in this world tend to do. Mermaids. Mermaids, on the other hand, they don't interact with anyone else. At least not much, because they are water-based. So their society would definitely be separate. Gnomes and orcs, though. And as soon as everyone else comes in, their ideas start commingling, and from there, development happens. Society happens. From there, society happens. Mermaids. Were mermaids made secretly? Ross was like, hey, I want a piece of this pie now. Just because it seems cool. Yeah. Ross saw the creatures. Ross saw the orcs and gnomes. And from there. Decided they wanted their own friends. So they would have seen orcs and gnomes. They would have seen mermaids as similar to gnomes in the way that they were like, hey, everyone's having fun up there. I want my own party. I want my own friends. Now I'm making them. Wanted their own. Uh, from there, felt they were. Missing out. They the only contact with these creatures was in rain when they drank and when they drowned. They just wanted a species that they would have constant contact with. And so created mermaids. Actually, I like the idea of each of the deities giving the species they create a gift. That seems fun. That seems funky. So created mermaids. Rain, ocean, sky, and water. Oh, and the sky. We don't have anything that flies, correct? Last marine tieflings. Yeah. Can mermaids fly? Could mermaids fly? No. They taught them, what did, they gifted unto them a value in beauty, in the pearls, in the iridescent, creatures, in everything they saw. But then some of them probably got vain and took it a little too far. That happens later. Still happens there. Anywho. I keep saying anywho. Uh, what else did they get? No, I reckon that's good. Actually, they were unknown to the other species for a while. 
until they came across more fisher people and beautiful people looking at themselves in the water. Okay. That is beautiful. You should come over here with us to other beautiful places. And they drowned. Yeah. But then they became more known to people. Although it was that you shouldn't go near them because if they've taken an interest in you, it means that they think you're beautiful and should go with them and you will likely die if you do. It's not their fault. They don't know that people drown in water. Everyone else they know doesn't. Why can't you be the same? <laughs> goblins. I don't think goblins were made out of spite. Loth makes things out of spite. Actually, wait. Wait, I need to read this, read this story again. Hold on. So Dune was like, oh yeah, no, I want to... Yeah, Lofa was like, no, we should... We should keep everything the same. So Dune was like that. And then Lof was like, no, we should have our own spots. I want this. That's right. And then Noth was like, I can't believe you've done this. Got angry, got sad, became the sun. Dune was like, wait, no, come with me. And then, yes. All right. So. Goblins. Goblins were not made out of spite. Goblins were made so it's like, hey, look, Loth, I can do this too. How about our people get to know each other? How about your people talk to my people, my people talk to your people, and maybe we can sort something out? And Loth was like, No. No, fuck you. And was like, Now I've got other people who don't like your people. And then they were like, Oh, well, we need other people to stand up to those people. And then... Well, maybe not. Maybe Lof was like, no, I... No, you can't have people that are, that, are, that are with my people. I'm making more people to overpower your people. And then Dune was like, well, alright, how about I make more people to talk to those people? And then everyone else was like, oh my god, can you stop quarreling and just stop overcrowding the place? So, Dune... Jeez. That is not how you spell Dune. It has a thing on it. Let's see. Let's just fix that up in here real quick. It has a thing. There we go. Dune. Dune wanted to get a hold of Lot. But could not catch up. They realized, though, that Loth had made and still interacted with the orcs their creation so Loth made goblins to act as messengers to tell the orcs that 
goon was sorry and wanted to talk. Loth was like, no. The orcs and goblins got along much to the frustration. So goblins were made to be personable. Goblins were gifted from Dune. Social awareness. And then everyone coming within them. Yes. Social awareness, and as such, got along well with the box, much to the dismay of Bluff. And from there, bugbears get made. And then from there, hobgoblins get made. And so forth. Which we will do next stream, because it is 6 o'clock now. And that means that the stream is now coming to a close. So, what do we do today? Made the species, figured out exactly when everyone came around, and who caused them to come around. Uh, whether or not you can get halves of any species, and we also got started on the origin stories of a handful of the species. So I hope you enjoyed today's stream. If you did, uh, follow would be appreciated. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to send them to me on Twitter at Forge of Worlds. Uh, this should be up on YouTube at some point under the Forge, uh, Forge of Worlds YouTube, which also has all the past episodes if you missed those as well. Uh, I believe that should be it for now, so thanks for watching. Catch you later.